There's a natural trait of the human being that when he gets a difficulty in life, some issue arises in life, which is a, you can say, a major part or an important part of life, ups and downs, highs and lows in life. There's nobody whose life is free from issues and problems or worries. There's always some sort of worry or issue or problem or something concerning that passes through a person's life. But the one point that comes to mind is that everybody considers his worries and problems to be the worst. And if somebody says, you know, I've got this issue, he goes, oh, that's nothing, my problem's worse than yours. I've got bigger problems than you. You've got no... You haven't got any issues. He goes, no, 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 this is the biggest issue. This is the biggest issue. My problems are the worst. And everyone's in this fikr and vicious sort of circle that my issues are the worst, my problems are the worst, my illness is the worst, my pain bodily or physical or spiritual is the worst. And everybody is in this vicious circle. And then we think about these things and we ponder over these things and a person's life passes through all of these phases of fikr and worry. But the reality is that the whole life, if we look at the whole life, and all of the people since when the world began until now and the time to come, and everybody's issues and problems, we amass them, we amass them, we sum them up, we top them up, all of the issues, problems, worries from the beginning of time till the end of time, and we put one issue in comparison to that, then all of the Messiah cannot even come close to this biggest problem that's on its own, that stands on its own. But we have to think that we don't consider that as an issue, nor do we worry about it, nor are we concerned about it, nor do we think about it. And as I said, that this is the big comparison I've just made. What is that issue or worry or problem? It's the worry of the akhirah, the hereafter. Or the loss, the regret, and the worry for the hereafter. The, the issue of the hereafter, if you put all of the Messiah of the world to one side, they cannot compare the sum of them to the figure of the hereafter. And this is the reality and the truth that I am mentioning here. And we cannot reject this, we cannot refute this. We have to, if we want to see the reality of this, then ask that person who has departed from this world. Who has departed from this world. That this fikr, the start of this fikr, this is such a worry, it's such a big masala, that the beginning, the first step of this fikr worry, the person witnesses it at the time of death. That when a person's departing from the world, it's called nazah. The time of death, maut. When Malikul Maut, the angel of death comes and he, that person, he's departing from the world and he starts to see the angel of death. He knows that his ruh is going to be extracted and then his condition, it changes, he's going through a different phase and that, that difficulty at the time of death is there. And that moment, though that split second, that moment, if you take that, that figure, that even if you bring all of the problems of the world and stand them against that one split second of fikr at the time of death, ask the person who's passing away. He'll say whatever he had kingdom, even if he had, he will sell thousands of his kingdoms. You say, but just give me uh, in exchange ease at the time of death. I need ease at the time of death. So this is the first masala, the first test when we are about to pass away, when our ruh will be extracted. So many ahadith about this, so many narrations, if we read, we'll be amazed. What is the reality of death and the hereafter? 
Ask that person whose life is being withdrawn. Ah, what issues did you have? Oh, you say, what are you talking about? Oh, you know, you had you had this uh, uh, this item you wanted desperately, or that issue that you had it wasn't being solved. You say, for the sake of Allah, speak about something else. He said, the problem I'm going through now, the condition I'm in now. Please save me. I'm very distressed. I'm about to pass away. Nobody can save that person then. Nobody. And this will happen to everyone. Kullu nafsun ba'ikatal maut. And nobody can reject this. In any faith a person believes in or follows, any sect that a person belongs to, you'll see differences of opinion. Lots of people don't even believe in a creator or God or Allah, etc. But when we talk about death, everybody accepts that of course we have to die. So what a big guarantee with regards to believing Allah, that if you believe in death, then why don't you believe in Allah? The indirect you're believing in Allah, that how foolish we are. That Allah Ta'ala has created such a condition and a feeling and something that will occur that if we believe in death, then we should believe in the Creator. Where did mouth come from? Where will a person go after mouth? If life was there and the death is there and we believe in it, then where will we go after that? So this is a massive reality. This is a massive reality. We have the figure of the whole dunya, me and you. Such a problem that comes in a life and we say, oh, it's difficult. Or oh, some people are taking sleeping pills, tranquilizers, somebody shouted at you, disrespected you, a little bit of a quarrel at home or a fight or an issue, whatever there is. Because this is life, and ups and downs in life in 24 hours a day. And if we go, how do we know what will happen to us if you leave home? How will we know what's occurred to us? We don't know. When we, live, we haven't got a, an, an idea of what may occur when we leave home, what may cross our path. And sometimes there's a small thing that happens to a person, but for him it's a massive problem. And when you look at it from the outside, you think it's a small thing, but that person's affected by he doesn't eat, he doesn't drink, or she doesn't eat, she doesn't drink, he doesn't sleep, or she doesn't sleep. It happens both sides, to brothers and sisters, men and women. And we look, if we're a third party, and we see somebody experiencing an issue, and we think, it's a minor, it's nothing. But that person's going through real um, struggle at that time. So the real issue and the real problem and worry that should be on our minds all the time is fikri akhirah, the worry of the hereafter which is going to come. Most definitely it's going to come. And how should we be paying attention to the fact that death is going to come and the hereafter? Because the death will come at any time. This is a fact. It will come at any time without giving us any notice. And if we take an example here, comparing it to our life in the world let's say for example uh, we have an issue or a problem and a worry and we are then told that after two months or after one month or after this many years or two years the problem will go away so we have some advance notice but for death is there any advance notice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that guidance clearly Allah ta'ala has defined iqtalaba that death is very close. It's very close to every individual. If Allah Ta'ala is saying, Qareeb, that it is close, death is close. And Allah Ta'ala has said, that it is so close that you have no advanced news. And where does Allah Ta'ala start from? First Allah Ta'ala mentions the time of death. That is a very testing time. Then after death, the person has to go through the stages. And we read the Qur'an, we understand that Allah Ta'ala has told us this, but we don't implement that meaning. Allah Ta'ala says, your hisab is going to take place. It is very close indeed. Your hisab. And who can give the example of the nearness of death? Because Allah Ta'ala has mentioned this in the Quran, but who could have given that example? Who could have defined that to us, that death is close? Only one person could have given us that definition and clarity, and that was Nabi al Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who came to teach us everything and to define the facts and make everything clear and plain and open. What a beautiful example he gave that we can understand. So the, all of the companions were sat, sitting down and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says, Shall I tell you how close the qurb, the closeness of death, Allah Ta'ala has said that death is close. Shall I explain and define? Rasulullah sallallahu wa said that if I take one sip of water, that sip of water is in my mouth. It is so close to me, but I don't even have that certainty that that sip of water that I put into my mouth, which is now in the mouth at the moment, that will it pass beyond my throat and go into my stomach? I don't even have that certainty, said Allah's Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa Despite, despite the fact that how long does it take for water to go from the mouth through the throat and down? But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that death is that close 
that maybe I'll put the mouth in, uh, the water in my mouth, but before it goes down through the throat, mouth will come. So that's how close the death is. We don't have that guarantee. That's how qareeb is death, and Allah Ta'ala has explained this to us. And this is how close it is, and we need to be aware of this. So this is how close death is, and Allah Ta'ala has told us that iqtalaba lin nasi sabahu. That death is very close and the judgment is very close. And how big an issue is this? How big a problem is this? We need to pay attention to this. That how many Muslims are there in the world today? One third of the population of the world are Muslims. There's Islam. One third of the population of the world. One third. Think for a moment. From the one third, how many people are thinking about death and death is close? We can see this. How many people are really preparing and thinking and worried and pondering and preparing? Let's do an analysis, a survey for example, a snapshot. Think about it. We need to think about this. So, is this our state of affairs? There's such a great fact, death, preparation, the whole world has forgotten this. We have forgotten this. And look at the situation of dunya around us that will say at the time of death, please just take everything from me, I need assistance, help. And what about the rest of the journey after that, after death? Brothers, what's the reason for this? Why are we in this situation? Why don't we have fikr for the hereafter? We have worry for many other things in the world in our life and worry. But we don't have worry for the hereafter. So what's the reason for this? And the Quran has explained this to us. Why? The fi ghaflatin mu'ridun. Allah Ta'ala has mentioned, وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مُعْرِدُونَ Allah Ta'ala has stated in the Qur'an, وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مُعْرِدُونَ Allah Ta'ala has explained that the reason, I will tell you the reason for this. Why are we in this position? Why do we neglect and have no worry and concern? Because of negligence. Because of negligence. Ignorance. Laziness. Non-awareness. Today we've forgotten our death. And we worry about everything in our life and the reason for this is one. غفلت Ignorance, negligence, non-awareness, careless attitude. We are غفل We are careless with regards to the, the reality of death. And this is such a disease. غفلت When a person is negligent or ignorant, when he's totally devoid of the understanding of the hereafter. It's a big disease. Big disease. And... It's a mistake that we make, a massive error. And we can, we can compare with this point that the quran hakim that Allah Ta'ala sent to us, the kitab, his book. <coughs> the quran hakim isn't it? One third of the Qur'an, one third of the Qur'an is, the subject is with regards to this. Allah Ta'ala in the third of the Qur'an, the subject that is being presented, is with regards to the ghaflat, the ghafilun, the ghafilin, the negligent people, the lazy, ignorant people who uh, who don't have regard. Not one ayah, not two verses, one third of the Qur'an. And Allah Ta'ala says, stand, beware, how dare we, don't be lazy, don't be negligent, don't be ignorant, don't leave, don't turn around, etc. And Allah Ta'ala has mentioned the previous nations and their accounts and what happened to them, why? Because Allah Ta'ala is developing an awareness within us, a consciousness, insan, the human being. Whatever sin he commits, that human being, why will he commit sins? Because he is ghafil. Because he is negligent and ignorant. And the difference here is that when something in the universe creation uh, forgets its Lord and it passes away. You know the fish in the sea, when the fish, they get caught in the net, it's those fish that come in the net that were ghafil, became ignorant. And the leaf that falls off the tree is because it became ghafil. In other words, the means of their death, the reason for the death is ghaflat. Ignorance, but the difference for human beings is different. The Allah Ta'ala says that due to your negligence and ignorance and non-awareness, Allah Ta'ala says, I don't allow you to die. Allah says, rather, negligence doesn't cause me to die, rather it gives me a chance to turn around and make amends. Allah says, I give you a chance. Maybe you're going to read Quran now. Maybe you'll listen to somebody now. Maybe you'll hear my message now that you are the ghafil. That you are ignorant. And he says, no, no, I'm not a ghafil, I run my business, I've got this house, I've got these items. And he doesn't even, even accept that he is lazy, or ignorant, or negligent. And Allah says, time and time again, you are the ignorant, you are the negligent, you have lost yourself, you have forgotten your root. What is the definition that Allah mentions in the Qur'an? What is the definition of the ghafil? 
the definition of the ghafil is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to, that relationship between the human being and Allah, that the human being forgets the laws and the rules and the principles that Allah ta'ala has sent to us. He forgets. He doesn't forget, rather he doesn't care. This is the asal definition of a ghafil. The, he's careless, he doesn't have, he doesn't take any heed that whenever he commits a sin, he'll be a ghafil. The human being who sins is the ghafil because he doesn't have any concern. He has no worry at the time. He has no care. He is not worried about his Lord. What did Allah say about this? That person will leave salah who is the ghafil. Yeah? That person will commit the sins who is the ghafil. Yeah? We need to see this point. We need to understand this point. That's a big punishment Allah Ta'ala has given. And Rasulullah has explained to us that the punishment for the ghafil, that my heart feels that I go to those homes where the men folk, when they hear the adhan or when it's time for prayer, and they don't come to the masjid to pray in congregation. Because this is an example that Rasulullah gave about the ghafil people who don't care, who've forgotten their creator, and they don't want to pray, and they don't go to the masjid. They've gone far, distant from the Lord. What will be our hal, my hal, your hal, that when mawt will be close, and I'll be about to die. And then Allah Ta'ala says, وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مُعْرِدُونَ When a person is the ghafil, that's when he forgets his Lord. There's a big sign here that every human being, every individual who commits a sin, me or you, then I have to put my name in the list of the ghafilun. Then how can it be? I've prayed salah, I've left the masjid, I commit a sin, I go into a different situation, then I'm a ghafil. I'm a negligent person. I'm ignorant. And the ghafil or ghaflat is such a state or a condition. The Quran explains this that this overwhelms the heart, it floods the heart, it affects the heart. Like for example, you, you go behind the veil, then a curtain comes over, the curtain and the curtain and the curtain, and the heart goes be- below, beneath the layers of darkness, and such heavy weighty veils come onto our heart, then Allah Ta'ala says that that person gets to that position, the khatam Allahu ala qulubihim, that the person reaches to that position, to that position that his heart his tongue, his eyes, upon all of them there's a padlock, the seal. Allah Ta'ala puts the seal on them and then they're, they're, they're locked and then they cannot be set free. And Allah Ta'ala says, this person has not cured himself. He's not taken the solution. If we see today our qawm, what is our situation? What is our hal? What is our condition? So ghafil, the ghafil for us is nothing. That, for example, I don't want to weigh my deeds that I do for the hereafter. I'd rather run after the dunya. But brothers, we shouldn't be weighing our commodities and assets of the dunya on the scale. We need to weigh the deeds we've done and our preparation for the hereafter on the scale. That a ghafil, look at the punishment. I remember an event. Uh, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. Ruhullah Allah ta'ala is nabi, great prophet of Allah. And he was once... Uh, walking and he was walking past a village and he saw that in that village while he was walking past he saw dead bodies lying outside the village on the ground and there were people with Hazrat Isa alayhi salam and said oh prophet of Allah that why are these people here on the ground why have they not been buried and then Hazrat Isa alayhi salam there can only be one reason that they haven't been buried and that these people they must have committed a sin and Allah is displeased with these people so the earth is not accepting their bodies and Allah is displeased with them. This can be the only reason that comes to mind. So they said that, tell us that what sin have they committed, these people? What sin have they committed, this qawm, these people, that the earth has not allowed them to be buried and their bodies have been flung onto the ground. So Hazrat Isa alayhi said, I must ask Allah because I have no knowledge of this. I need to ask Allah. So Hazrat Eli Salam requested and did dua that Allah tell me Allah that what sin did these people commit so that we can be saved from that action and this consequence. So Allah Ta'ala gave the answer that Isa I'll do this, that let the night come and at the night time these people themselves will tell you just wait till night time in this village. In this village. That's it. So Hazrat Isa alayhi salam stood there until night. Hazrat Isa alayhi salam and the others who were with him. And when the night came, then Hazrat Isa alayhi salam called out, Oh dead people. And from one of them, a man stood up from one of the dead. And he said, Ruhullah, O Prophet of Allah, 
you don't know that what did the people of this village do, the sin they committed. Isa salam said, what sin did you commit? He said, the reason for this consequence is that we became, they became ghafir, ignorant of their Lord. They had no care. They had so much love of the dunya that had overwhelmed them. This became our hal, our situation, that we were living our lives, that in our world, in our life, that if any loss occurred in our worldly goods, material, then for us it became a very difficult time. It was like Qayyama for us, day of judgment. And if we attain happiness in the world, in the dunya, and it was like Eid for us, we loved it. So our living and dying, our loss and our success was based on, hinged on the worldly success. And we forgot our Lord. So uh, uh, Isa, Isa says, is it? And he said, yeah, this is why we're being punished. So what about you then? Hazrat Isa alayhi salam asked, that why did only you get come alive and tell me, why did everyone else not come to life? Why are you speaking alone? He said, the reason for this is that all of the dead bodies around here, that upon their mouths is the chain of fire that Allah Ta'ala has put on their mouths and they cannot speak. Listen brothers, listen brothers, which position are we sitting at the moment? That Allah Ta'ala has sealed their mouths with fire. So Hazrat Isa alayhi salam asked, how comes you spoke? He said, I didn't do this action that they did. I wasn't included, but I, I wasn't included in that sin, but I used to live with these people. So Allah Ta'ala gave me also the situation, the consequence that I'm just hanging above hell. And maybe I'll drop, maybe I'll drop. And Allah hasn't sealed my mouth with the fire. And Allah has decreased my sin, uh, my punishment, because I didn't do what they did, but I was living alongside them. So this is the adab I've got. What was the reason? Ghaflat. Ignorance and forgetting their Lord Allah. So let's think. This thing, and this is one, not one verse of the Quran, one third of the Quran gives us the message, don't forget your Lord, your objective. So how can we pass the life? Think, think. What lives are we passing? You have to push people towards salah, you have to give bayans and lectures and tell people to save themselves from the sin. And you have to, um, you have to absorb people's shouting and their displeasure and their anger. But we're not worthy, are we, of thinking and preparing for the hereafter. In the hadith, it says that the layers of darkness seal the person's heart to the point that he has no, he cannot turn, return from that position. And the head of this is those, uh, the head are those people who forget Allah totally. In some commentaries say, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ This surah came for those people that, oh, totally, you have lost and your deen is with you, you cannot be corrected now. Because you have drowned yourself in ghaflat, in ignorance. So brothers, we need to think about this now, that how are we passing the life? Allah, may Allah forgive, may Allah forgive, that this is a an ajeeb situation, that... I have just given you an example of the universe that even if the fish, they ignore Allah or forget Allah, they pass away. The leaves fall off the branches because they might forget Allah for a split second. But Allah Ta'ala doesn't punish us for our act of ghaflat. We are given a chance. But all of the punishments of the ghafil individual will be given after death. So Allah Ta'ala says that how close is death? Very close indeed. It's very close, closer than we can ever imagine. So what should we be doing? We should do true tawbah, we should repent honestly, and the ahkams that we are not bringing to our life practically, that Allah Ta'ala has ordained and He has revealed and given to us the deen of Islam, we should understand what is that deen. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad rasulullah Allah's ahkams and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sunnah, to fulfill Allah's orders in the light of the sunnah. In the way the sunnah, and if we are behind in both of these, in any way or form, in the ahkams, then what are we? We are the ghafir. With the ghafil. There's nothing to argue about here. Totally the Qur'an is telling us straightforward that we are the ghafil. Because the ghafil, he does this. The person who's awake, who's with Allah, he will never commit the excess. How can he leave the deen? How can he leave his rabb? And for example, let's take the example of the world now. Two men, and both have shops or businesses. Okay? And we have the example, the first person is sleeping, the next man gets up on time, 7 a.m., unlocks the shop, the shatter, pulls it up. What will we call the second person? Ghafil? No. But the first one is the ghafil, because he didn't even go to open his business. He will be cursed, joked at, just say, oh, look, the first, this man, he opens his shop on time, this man, he's sleeping, he doesn't even run his business on time. Won't we call that person a ghafil? Negligent? Ignorant? If you want to sit on the plane, if we want to sit on the plane and... 
um, for example, a person, he's prepared, he's the ghafil, and he sleeps and he puts the button on snooze. What will we call that person? We'll say he's the ghafil, the person who overslept and he didn't go to the flight. But the person who did catch the flight, who set the alarm, he is alert. So the person who leaves salah, what do the angels call that person? He's a ghafil. He's the ghafil, the person who doesn't pray salah or doesn't worship. And they say that he's wretched. He's the ghafil, he leaves the congregation, the jamaat, the salah. And all of the hakam, if we take Allah's laws and principles and rules, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So, worldly progress, we should not be gauging on our scale. Allah says, Pull ya ayyu al kafirun. Allah says, then go, go and enjoy yourself in the world. Because you have forgotten me, your time is finished, your chance is gone, your opportunity is gone, that you could have made amends. And the seal has been placed on your eyes and your heart and your mouth, and you are now attached, super glued to the world. You didn't understand the Quran. And here's another point that the ghafil, the ghafil, he doesn't understand. And he accepts, the ghafil, he accepts that he's doing wrong. He accepts, he's aware. There's nobody, even the person who is a Muslim or non-Muslim, whoever, everybody who knows the reality and they see the haq and they know the truth. And the people who are mu'mins, if you say to somebody, Salah, yeah, yes, yes, I know, I should pray, but why don't you pray? Oh, just, uh, it's okay. One day, he accepts the person. That why don't you leave this sin? He knows that what he's doing is a sin, or it's unlawful or haram. Why don't you leave this action? Just, I can't. He won't say, no, no, it's not haram. There are very few people, because nobody can reject the truth. And if the Qur'an and the Hadith are in front of us and says to us, this is unlawful, we won't reject openly. And to look at this as haram, and there's many Hadith or hundreds of Hadith, and we know that what we're doing is wrong, but in the night we'll still carry out that sin. We'll sit down in the same way. She will sit down in the same way. And we'll pass the night in the same way. We're listening at the moment to what I'm saying. And the, 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 the voice is reaching us, the words of the Qur'an are reaching us. But after listening, we will go back to our old ways. Back to always, and the veil will come back on our heart and on our life. So the ghafil, the hal of me, us, we are all ghafil. Not other people we're talking to, we're talking to ourselves. We listen, I listen, I accept, but there's one thing I don't do, I don't accept. Yeah? So I listen, but I don't accept. And this is the quality of the ghafil that he doesn't accept. For example, now, if we announce that there's a very big scholar coming, an alim's coming, a wali wala's coming, the masjid will fill up. Oh, this scholar's coming, wali Allah, pious man's coming, with titles and long names, the masjid will fill. That this person's coming, Tariq Jameel Sahib's coming, this person's coming, he's coming right now. The masjid will fill up, won't it? And if we say that dhikr is happening, shh, shh, everybody will disappear from the corners. And have the, Is Allah Ta'ala's dhikr great or is Tariq Jameel great? Tell me. وَلَا ذِكْرَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرْ Ask. So he is, uh, Mulana sahab, Tariq Jameel sahab is going to give the, the, the bayan and he is going to say that do the dhikr of Allah. He will say this only, but here we are doing the dhikr of Allah. We are doing the dhikr of Allah. So is there not a difference? So from in this manner I am speaking. Not a negative way. He is calling the qawm, come, come. That every da'i will say, every da'i was the da'i knows what is dhikr, come towards dhikr, come towards Allah's remembrance, come towards Allah's remembrance. And due to that, the masjid will because they're coming to call, or what's he going to say, what they're going to come and let's see and hear. But the true thing that's being given da'wah for, they come and sit in dhikr, physically we're doing it, shh, everybody will disappear. And what do we become? The ghafileen. Allah Ta'ala says, وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٌ Allah Ta'ala says, مُعْرِدُونَ Allah, Allah Ta'ala saying that these people, they don't accept, they know, they're aware. They, but they have no acceptance because the locks have come onto their hearts, the veils. They know everything. They know, but they don't want to accept that this is the fact. They don't want to accept. Fir'aun, what was Abu Jahl? Did he not know, Abu Jahl? That what's in my hand? Subhanallah. And what did he say? That, oh, you're the Nabi, tell me what's in my hand. And he said, then will you hit me? And Allah Akbar, did he know? How can he explain? That tell me what's in my hand, you tell me. What's in my hand? He said, will you hit me? He said, I will hit you. He said, okay, should I tell you what's in your hand? Then subhanAllah, if I tell you, subhanAllah. That you're asking me, and in your hand, shall I tell you? He said, how can you tell me? He said, here, look. SubhanAllah. And then the stones, they said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Then what happened? He was a ghafil. That person, he took the stone and he threw it on the floor. And he ran off. So this is the hal of the ghafil. He said, no, 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 this is wrong. If you tell somebody, pray salah, go in congregation, don't do this sin. No, 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 no. He doesn't listen. The ghafil. And this is the example I've just given you. The Quran has said, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ Finished. 
that you have no link with the iman because the person goes to the extreme of the ghaflat. May Allah Ta'ala forgive us, this is a very dangerous position my friends. And in this situation, we should never think that we will depart with iman. Any woman or man, anybody. If we continue to sin after hearing this, that this is a situation that here the people are listening, seven, eight hundred people, etc. And here we are in the masjid, the masjid fill up, we're all listening. What is the situation? That we need to speak honestly to Allah, that Allah, we will not remain the ghafil Allah. We are going to pay attention and focus on you. And that's when we will have benefit of sitting here listening to what I'm saying, etc. What a great message. That when we see that Allah Ta'ala's hukum is there, Allah's order is there, and we're lazy, this is Allah's hukum, and we're negligent and lazy, and we don't have nothing that's forcing us to do that, then we should consider we are the ghafil, and we are negligent, and we are ignorant, and we are not aware. And if we were in a, situ- a different situation, or a different form of creation, Allah Ta'ala maybe would take our life. But because we've got a stamp that 60, 70 years, we're going to stay alive, Allah Ta'ala has mercy. Because we are the ummah of Rasulullah as I said, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, look in his day and age how people were treated, the ghafilin. Allah Ta'ala said, the earth did not accept the ghafil. But we will be accepted. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will be accepted. But then what will happen? There within the grave, all of the punishments will come for the ghafil. This is the difference Allah has kept. Allah Ta'ala will not reject us openly on the crust of the earth, and nor will the graves. But the punishment will come and it will be a worse punishment, a bad punishment. Is this a significant thing? That Allah's hukum is coming and we follow our desires. Allah has given us an order and I'm not implementing it. And openly I'm walking around in the world. Yes, we will. We will continue. Did Abu Jal not wander around the world? The sinner? Did Abu Lahab not wander around in the world? Were they not rejectors? Those people who didn't believe and opposed the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, they rejected him. They lived, they ate and they did everything. But where does the person end? What's his end point? Rasulullah showed, they were thrown into the well. Ah, now do you know who was right and what was wrong? And what his right was wrong? They said, oh Prophet wasallam, do the dead people listen? And Rasulullah said that, yeah, listening to me very clearly at the moment. And all of my messages reaching to them. Reaching to them. This reason so that we can have yaqeen. Because Rasulullah sallallahu didn't d- d- demonstrate his more jaza for show. He said, no, at the moment these people, the veils of ghaflat have overwhelmed them. Don't you do the same thing. And the Quran says that one third of the Quran is telling us from Alif Lam Mim. You start to read the Quran and you ponder and you analyze the verses on this topic. MashaAllah, you are hafid and qari and scholars. When you read the Quran, pay attention to this topic that Allah Ta'ala is taking the person out of ghaflat. And the ghaflat or is he Allah Ta'ala giving this person the message of, of something else and the Quran gives the message in one third of the Quran it's not story tales it's come to it has been revealed to save us from the hellfire the Quran is openly clearly directing people away from ignorance and for us to purposely leave Allah Ta'ala's remembrance his deen and we don't accept we know it but we don't accept so this is a very bad situation very bad situation that we're in so if we're ghafil but we are human beings or we not? Isn't it? We are human beings, so should we do tawbah or not? We should do tawbah, isn't it? Those brothers who are listening, should we do true tawbah or the same tawbah of the ghafil? So let's make the promise today for ourselves that Allah Ta'ala, wherever your hukam comes, your order, that we will not break the hukam because otherwise I'll be included in the ghafil list. And if mouth comes, that's it. No power of the world can save me. I have to look towards the order that Allah Ta'ala has given. What is the order this time? And we need to act on the order. So we have to break all the idols and our desires and go beyond that, the temporary things, and believe and accept the order of Allah. One dog. One dog, if I give you the example, and we can imagine then, the Malik, he clicks the finger, or ushers, and the dog leaves everything, even if he is sucking on the bone, and the, the owner calls, and he run to the owner, because the dog recognized the owner. And we, the Malik calls us, and we turn our faces, and leave the Rabb, the Malik, because we are in the state of the Ghafilun. We leave our Rabb, we are worse than the dog at that time, because at least the dog recognizes its own, and we cannot recognize our Khalik who gives us ni'mah, rewards, our life, our breath, our barakat, and blessings. Are we human beings? Look, Allah Ta'ala says, what can I do? Allah says, I'm merciful, I've given you a chance, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, and I'm waiting for you, that you can take heed and learn, the wise will come, the speakers will come, they'll explain to you, you'll read the Quran, and the Quran will be read to you, revised to you, the meaning will be explained to you, and mashallah, good, good gatherings will come, that maybe today you'll understand, your Rabb doesn't want to send you to Jahannam, your Rabb wants that you should go into paradise, in the beautiful fields of paradise, and today, the people who are listening, the men and the women, this is, is this not Allah's karam? His mercy that those people, they should change their lives for the better. For the better. 
So this is the situation. And then Allah Ta'ala says, okay, fair enough. That this is a big disease and a big illness in a person. He says, Allah, show me the shelter. Give me some refuge, Allah. That person who's being thrown into hellfire, me and you, then we should seek the refuge, the protection. Allah is that shelter that we can be saved from hellfire. Allah Ta'ala says, you're in the world, but I'll give you the shelter and you can save yourself. Protection, you can be protected from being the ghafil. Say, subhanallah brothers. Subhanallah. Allah Ta'ala says, yes, I'll give you the shelter and you'll be saved from being the ghafil. And you should take the steps and I'll give you the tariqah. Allah says, the method. Allah has given the path, defining the path. Allah Ta'ala says, okay, I'll give you the tariqah, the method. You, do you want to be saved? You want to come out of the ghaflat and the ignorance? Allah, yes, we want to. Allah says, I will help you. I'll take you away from ignorance and rejection. I'll give you the tariqah, the method that you will be strong pray- worshippers. You will pray on time, right time. When you leave the world, you'll be reciting, La ilaha illallah. And the kalima will be on your tongue. And you'll be a good person. Upright. Allah Ta'ala says, if you accept this condition, then I'll take you out of the condition of the ghafil. Should we accept this? At least accept this. The solution's there, the cure's there, isn't it? Should we? So if we are wrong, we made a mistake, at least let's accept this solution that's given. Allah, we accept we are weak. Give us a solution so we can come out of the, being in the state of the ghafil after hearing the speech. I go back to the same problem, same laziness, same reactions, whether I'm a woman or a man or a sister or a brother. We know Allah that if we continue to be ignorant and negligent, and we leave your deen, then we are going towards the hellfire. Allah, please allow these veils to be burned that have sealed our hearts and our minds. Allah, make them disappear. And make us come to the right path. And soon as the veils disappear, Allahu Akbar. Soon as the veils, they disappear, then the person goes far from negligence and ignorance and carelessness and leaving his rub and he runs back to his Lord. And the person, the human is faster than the dog when he hears the call of his malik. Just like the sahaba, they got there within the click of a finger. Not just the adhan. Before the adhan, the believer gets to the house of Allah. The, oh, let me get there first and do wudu, sit there with ease and do tasbih. That becomes the heart of the person. Before the person, when he hears the adhan, he puts the fingers in his ear. To this extent, I've heard that people, they say, oh, why is the azan being called out loud? Molana is the pestered as one azan, second azan. What is this? And this is here in our countries, Muslim countries, Muslim cities, countries. And we are living a better life here. And nobody says this here. Nobody complains here. Even the people who don't, who are not Muslims, they respect when they hear the adhan. And the Muslim in his home country, listen, the words that people say after adhan, adhan which is a high, high status, and we can't imagine what a great thing that Allah Ta'ala has given to us. And with regards to Azan, our Qawm says, and then when we get persecuted, because everything we're doing, Allah Ta'ala says that at the moment there's nothing here, Allah Ta'ala says, I'm just showing you a trail, and the true picture is about to start. This is just an advert. These are small clips Allah Ta'ala is showing. These are small clips and examples. Allah Ta'ala says that we are worse than the dogs, and we're getting treated worse than the dogs. And we don't understand Allah Ta'ala, His ni'mah is given. We are in the worst extreme situation of laziness. We don't know what's unlawful. We accept, we say everything that we believe, but we don't accept. We just say we know, but we don't accept. Allah, we can't practice this. Allah, we are forced to, we can't do this. Allah Ta'ala says that these are short clips I'm showing you, the consequences in the world that maybe now you'll understand. Maybe now you'll understand. But Allah says, if I grab you, then nothing in the world can save you, Allah Ta'ala says. And then, what was the consequence of the ghafileen, of the ghafil people? And the Hazrat Sallallahu was shown that the negligent people, the ignorant people, the, the earth did not accept their graves. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi due to his sadqa, what is our hal? Our women, our men, they're lying down naked. The women. On top of the earth. When we go and when we give them the ghusl and we lower them into the grave, we say do dua and the salah. But ask what's happening inside to the person who's in the grave. Speak about the person inside. Allah Ta'ala says, I put the veil, the earth between you, but I can't reduce the adab. That is my law, my principle. You are happy that you used to see that person and those bodies used to be on the earth and the dogs used to devour. And this was what happened before Allah's hukum came. And they used to be turned upside down and the earth would turn them out of the grave. And in our homes, there's nobody to make us afraid or scared. We have no khawf, no, we're not scared. We have no fear. Our children have no fear because we are not correct ourselves. We are not correct ourselves. Our father, I was sitting next to Hazrat Sahib, Rahimahullah. May Allah Ta'ala put so much rahmah and rain down the mercy on my shaykh to the extreme. May Allah Ta'ala put so much rain of mercy on his body and give him such a great status on Qiyamah that the all of the walis Allah will be envious of him that he gave us a new lease of life. Otherwise, today, who would I be? 
Then the path was light for me and the, now, where will you go to now? Where will you turn to now? Allah Ta'ala said the Nabi Al-Kareem Sallallahu was sent. He was sent to the world. But the people, Abu Jahl stayed Jahl. He stayed Abu Jahl and his whole party, his company, his tribe, they stayed ignorant. This was the hal of that comb. And now the Wali of Allah is here, we go, we sit, we have a sober this company, but our hearts are blind because we don't have a niya. He's not a magician, is he? So the first the person has to present himself to Allah that I need your closeness, Allah. Then Allah gives that thing. Allah, we don't want it, but we come like a drama, an empty box, and we play games. We don't want the sincerity. That's why our situation doesn't improve for the better. That's why we don't get close to Allah because we are inside it. We're not siddhat. We're not sincere with Allah. We haven't asked honestly that Allah we want to leave the world. We have got the life of negligence and laziness, ignorance. No sister, brother, if we had asked sincerely, then imagine the wali of Allah, his position is such that he is the deputy of the Prophet ﷺ. And the fares and the blessings and the noor is spread. And it goes to the students. And I'm sitting in front of you. Such a bad life. No awareness of how to eat, how to sleep, how to drink. There was no awareness. There was no awareness. But when the true wali of Allah set his sights upon me, Allah, I tell you the honesty, that Allah give me the good life. I, I said, Allah, I've read the Quran, Allah, this life I'm leaving is different. And it's not good. Totally a dirty spider of the gutter. Allah Ta'ala picked up that spider and sent it to the wali of Allah. And it was an honest statement that was made from the heart. And within a second, my life changed. And the heart, the hand came into the hand and the life became better and amazing. But the other party, which is the party of Abu Jahl, and that shows kashf and karamat. Oh, we haven't seen this. This wali is better. He does a dua and then my business prospers. And the other sheikh does a dua and this occurs. And we keep running around all our lives looking for this, both friends of Allah. Is this something to ask for? That's why I said that these things are more attractive for those people in whose hearts there's the padlock, a seal. And they don't have the fikr of the akhirah. There's such a minimal fikr of thereafter. But they have big worries for the world. Oh, whoa, forget the akhirah. They say, Allah, Hazrat, I want this. I want to be rich. I want to be famous. Do this for me. Do that for me. Forget mouth. That's distant. Oh, you will forgive me. The look is, listen to this. They even go beyond that. They say, oh, you will forgive me, oh, Hazrat. My Shaykh, so fikr akhirah, the worry of the hereafter, we don't consider that as the worst thing. We say, no, no, I want this in the world, my money is stuck, do dua for me so my money is released and I can be prosperous in business. Fikr of the akhirah, the person forgets that even in Makkah, he, we go and ask for the commodities in front of the road that we ask for the dunya. Well, so that's how a person, Allah Ta'ala sends that person. Everyone has an opportunity. Abu Jal, did he have, didn't he have opportunities? He was in Makkah, he went Medina, Roda, Munafik can go today. Maybe this ghafil will learn and he will depart here as a good person. But when he comes back, in the hand he's got the dates, and in the other hand, Zamzam. And he has the, the, the flower of the rupees around his neck. And he says, oh, I've come back from the Hajj Umrah, I've got Zamzam and the dates. And people like me and you, we go and eat then drink. Ah, oh, maza, mashallah, enjoyment. What were you doing there? Yeah, yeah, the weather was good. And I did this and I had a nice room in the hotel. There was a good preparation and the food. And I went to Salah and we used to sleep after that. And I was enjoying myself. And I did shopping. And my wife was shopping. And we used to go in the night shopping. We used to run around. And we went here. Then we went to India, Gujarat, Pakistan had a holiday, we had our things to do and then we make the route in between okay on the way to Pakistan, India we'll just stop off Umrah my husband gave an order that if you want to come to see me then come direct if you want to do Umrah Hajj then go back home after Umrah Hajj Subhanallah that's it that if you're going to meet Allah then go to meet Allah why do you come in between oh I'm going to India I'm going somewhere else Bangladesh Pakistan okay on the way we'll do Umrah we'll just you know so we can uh, save the, 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 the price of the ticket is this love I'm not giving a fatwa that this is not jais but I'm not talking about fatwa I'm just talking about muhabbat and love and regard don't we feel ashamed when we do this oh we take a shulka on the way this is Ajib such a great place we go to and after where do you want to go to our country home country and what happens there that everything within a minute, all the umrah, the face, the blessings disappears. Is this dunya? This is dunya we're living in. The dunya will have its effect. So when we go on umrah, that's it. You're going to just land at the airport and the people who kind of come and receive you there enough to save your umrah or to take your umrah. This is the ghafil. The dunya is ghafil today. Ignorant. Brothers, وَهُمْ فِيهُمْ غَفْلَةٍ Allah Ta'ala says, the ghafil, mu'ridun. Everything takes us towards ignorance of Allah. Everything makes it fake worry and a problem in front of us. But the fikr of the akhirah, the worry of the akhirah hereafter, that's what we need to have. So Allah Ta'ala says, fine, go forth. 
But have courage and determination. Try to become sadiq. Ask from Allah. First thing is to raise the hands. Allah, take me out of ghaflat. Take me out of ignorance. First present your worries and and issues. Allah, I'm the ghafil. We don't accept. Allah says, accept you the ghafil. Why are you ghafil? Ask yourself the question. Allah says, why are you saying that you're not the ghafil? Allah says, you are the ghafil because today you left this deed. Allah said, don't do this action. You did it. If you did it, then you are the ghafil. What else is the ghafil? No, no, no. I just did one sin. We think like this. I just did one or two. Allah says, that's not what goes in my court. One ghafil, the ghafil of one moment, he is dead at that time. The person who is negligent of his Lord, ignorant, not remembering his Lord, he is living on chance that maybe he will come back to life and be saved from the ghafil. Otherwise his link with Allah is broken. The link is broken and he's passed away. That's it. And by force, uh, but I only did it for this reason, that person, he did it and he, my son, he came, he asked for this and he would have been unhappy with me. That's it. We break the link. Allah is one. That's it. After Allah, with Allah, we don't barter with anybody. We don't, we don't negotiate when it comes to Allah Ta'ala's order. La ilaha illallah. Allah, the greatest, the creator, ma'bud. Everyone else will pass away and finish. Allah is everlasting and we have to follow the order of our son. In front of Allah's order, my son, sit here. This is Allah's order. I cannot negotiate. I'm not going to compromise. No hisab kita. So we need to get to this position, and Allah has given us ibadah, worship. Wafkurullah kathiran laallakum tuflihun. What is that deed? What guarantees Allah given? Tuflihun. That in the world you will be successful, in the akhirah you will be successful, your life will become made, Allah Ta'ala's obedient servant you will become, and you will become the lover of the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallam. If you in abundance with siddaq, do the dhikr of Allah, remember Allah. And this is dhikr. This is dhikr my friends. Guarantees coming, tuflihun. Allah says that if somebody is a ghafil, can you attain Allah's nearness? So what we realize after dhikr, we get the guarantee of what? Tuflehun, Allah has given us the guarantee. So it's proven here that the dhakir who does dhikr of Allah, always who does dhikr of his Lord, who remembers Allah in kathir and kathir in abundance, can never be the ghafil, negligent, ignorant of his Lord. Can never really forget. Now I'll give you the example, that the, the translation here, that there's darkness here, outside. Total darkness. And you put the light on. If there's darkness in the room, you put the light on, there'll be light. So it won't be dark. So there's either darkness or there's light. Where there's sweet or there's bitter. Opposites. You can't have two mixed. Either it'll be black or white. Opposite. In the same way, either a person will be a ghafil or a dhakir. Totally. These two things cannot be together. They are opposites. The person who doesn't do dhikr, then he is a ghafil. Or she is a ghafil. The Quran says this. And so many points have come out from the hadith. And those who don't do dhikr are dead. Because the ghafil is dead. He has passed away. I've said this before. Look, the hadith proves this. The hadith proves this. Such a big action is dhikr, brothers. This is the hal. And after announcing dhikr, people run away. Oh, dhikr, dhikr. They run off. Nobody likes dhikr of Allah nowadays. They don't aware. And the whole dunya is ghafil. And there's one reason. As a sheikh, sheikh al said, Explain, he said that in his final days that those things that will give success in the Quran is explained success. We've left those actions. The whole ummah has left the action. Dhikr of Allah. And when dhikr is gone, then what is left? Is there anything left? Ghaflat. The ghafl, when the light goes, then there's darkness left. It's apparent, it's obvious. If there's no light, there's darkness. So when dhikr is gone, then what will be left? Nothing. So when dhikr is gone, then ghaflat comes, the ghafil comes. Because dhikr, remembrance of Allah, is the opposite to forgetting Allah. There's no cure for being the ghafil. There's no cure for ignorance and forgetting Allah. Because remember as I said, the ghafil is he who has forgotten his Lord. He's not focused on his Lord. And the person who is the dhakir is he who is focused on his Lord, on Allah. That's why Allah Ta'ala said, that I will give you, not for a second do I want to see you as the ghafil. If your mood comes, then he stated, وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Allah says, do dhikr in kathir, abundance, so that when your mood comes, then you are doing dhikr at that time as well. As well. To this extent, Allah Ta'ala said, why? Because you will not be living the life of the ghafil. That woman cannot be in the uh, state of ghaflat if she is the dhakir. Always your heart and your tongue should be moving with the dhikr of Allah and the naqshbandi. How lucky we are so fortunate in this day and age that our hearts, we are doing dhikr alive in the hearts. Allah has made the dhikr alive. Not just in the heart, rather the lataif, the different parts of the body are alive with the dhikr of Allah. The root, the soul, the body, everything. If everybody wants to do, if you want to do dhikr, then your 
ruh. Your soul, your body will be doing the kabbah. Is this not the cure for the ghafil? And if we don't take the cure, we say, Allah, we the ghafil. That's why Allah says, Qul ya ayyul kafirun, la abudu ma ta'abudun, wa la antum abiduna ma'abud. Allah says, you go, you, you're on your path of me. Allah says, I'm separate to you, because you don't remember me, you don't do my dhikr, you don't want to come out of the state of the ghafil, then what are you? Allah says, this age... This day and age we're living in, the dunya, the fast-paced world, we are all immersed in the punishment of the ghaf, of ghaflat of ignorance, and there's only one thing that can save us, is the remembrance of Allah. That's it. Straightforward. Straightforward. Not will dhikr will Allah give us a wilayat, or to get a seat, or a, st- or a status. The dhikr of Allah is for one reason, so we can come away from ignorance and forgetting Allah, to becoming those who are focused and remembering Allah. So this is today a very big topic that came to my mind. Alhamdulillah, it's so sad that we are today, if we look at the ummah and look at ourselves first, that I am the ghafil and we are negligent and lazy, ignorant. We are like dead. We are dead already. The Hazrat Isa was shown that those people who passed away in their bodies were on the ground, they couldn't be buried. And in reality, we are like the dead pot- bodies on the well. The Hadith says that the person who doesn't remember Allah is like the dead body. He's passed away. And everywhere we go, it's like everyone's passed away. We are walking, the walking dead. Because the Hadith cannot be wrong, and the Quran cannot be wrong. So those who don't remember Allah, their hearts are dead. And if our hearts are dead, then we are walking around the well. We are in effect passed away. So if we want life, we need the company of the walis of Allah, and the companions of the wali wala should be the same tariqa, the same way, just like the noble companions of Allah, they were the relationship with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi when they used to go to his company and he used to say something, they accepted the practice of today if a student goes to the company of the Shaykh and the Shaykh decides that's the decision for his life, that's it. If he says leave this action is haram, we say it's totally haram Hazrat. If he says that do this, then yes I will do this. Amanna wa sadaqana With our shaykh we should continue to travel with our honest heart Allah for this reason that I want to be successful in this world And I'm afraid of that time which is the time of death The time of the qabr, the day of hashar And as the, the people who are dead they're screaming on the earth hal is this That the situation in the earth nowadays If you stand on the banks of a graveyard in the boundary of the graveyard and stand there and those who have kashf and his kabul ask those people the husband what's happening in the grave they said don't ask in this grave there's fire in this grave there's halfa in this grave there's other punishment this person gave punishment for this sin he was lying and this person was getting the punishment of the urine not care with the urine he was back biting he ate haram from every grave and you can hear the scorpions and the snakes and the serpents and the makhluk everything in the creation can hear the punishment of the grave except for the human being why because we are in the test that maybe we'll realize today. Maybe we'll realize today. Why? Because for the creatures, the animals, they can hear the punishment of the grave. Okay, everything can hear. But they, we can't hear the punishment of the grave because Allah Ta'ala says that I want you to have yaqeen and a bigger thing which is the Quran and the Hadith. Our Habib, my Habib, Allah Ta'ala said that don't you believe in my Habib who was the greatest, the most honest? And we say, oh, shaitan is saying this, kash, and he's showing me this in the grave. For example, he may hear you. He may make you hear the, the, the grave. We say, no, no, this must be a jinn. This might be a jinn. This may be some other supernatural force or shaitan. And we're hearing this from the grave. It's not the person who's buried in the grave. He was pious. He was a good man. This is not him. And this is the jinn, shaitan. Allah Ta'ala said for this reason, that even if you hear, Allah says, that's why I don't make you hear. Because even then you won't accept when you hear the noise and the shrieks from the grave. Allah says, I've given you a greater voice than that, which is the beloved statement of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that nobody can reject. Nobody. When he used to speak, it was due to wahi and revelation of Allah. Eh, yeah, Allah Ta'ala said, a revelation. Wahi. What there, can there be greater than this? If we don't have yaqeen and Rasulullah's revelation, then forget about if we hear the, the noises in the grave. But this is what's happening in the grave. This is the game that's being played out. And we are going to go then buried. We go then say, Assalamu alaikum, you have gone and we're going to come after you. We're running after you. Then we say inside that you, are you going to come or are you just saying this? You left me here. The man says in the grave, the oh you person, are you practicing? Look at my hal. What situation I'm in. For the sake of Allah, at least you should do something good. And from there we laugh, show our teeth and we come back after the graveyard. We leave the graveyard and show our teeth and laugh. At least hear the man in the grave that you have come here to give salam to me, do dua for me. And you're saying that I'm coming after you, you're going to die as well. But what are you doing to learn? Do tawbah, repent, open your eyes. Allah Ta'ala has given you azim life. You're standing, if you do tawbah now, all your sins will be forgiven. Subhanallah. We have gone into ghaflat and our tongues, they, they have not accepted the, the tawbah before we passed away. Somebody called us and said, do tawbah in my hand, but we didn't listen. Oh, zalim, oppressor, you listen at least, wretched man. And Allah has put the as of the effect in tawbah, that the heaven and the earth, 
Everything, the sins you've committed between the heavens and the earth and the karam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mercy, if you say with the honest heart, Allah forgive me, Allah will forgive all of your sins. And your qabr will become full of the light. But the ghafil doesn't do tawbah. The ghafil doesn't do repentance. And if we do tawbah, we say, oh, then I'll lose out in the world. What will happen to my money, my wealth, and what will happen to this and this asset? And I've got things spread out around the world. Hi, hi. A person, he should leave what's spread out. And he departs and leaves what he has in the world. He departs and leaves his assets. Iqtalab al nasi Allah Ta'ala says, that so close is the death and the hisabahu. So let's do true tawbah, true repentance. We are all sinners. Let's all honestly repent. All our sins, even if they are massed to the heights between the heaven and the earth, will be forgiven. Then let's cure the ghaflat, the ghafil and sit in Allah's court and do dhikr. Not a second should pass that our tongue is, our tongue is not moving, a noise our heart moving. Always Allah, Allah. Focus on the heart, on the tongue, on the heart. And then we have to practice, make it move. Allah, 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 Allah. And doing Allah, Allah doesn't mean you commit the sins and say Allah, Allah. And we think it's canceling the sin. No, 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 no. Like Abu Jal. We have to eliminate the ghafil state. Allah, my husband said that if your love is increasing for good deeds, and if you're going far from the sins and you're understanding what is lawful and lawful and you're understanding everything, then your dhikr is accepted. It's accepted. And if these two feelings you're not feeling, doesn't matter how much thicker you've done, but it's a total waste, as I said, a total waste. And nothing, you have all oh, 10,000 tasbih, 15,000 tasbih, 100,000 tasbih, bowing the head, and the maktubat has been written. As I said, that your dhikr is totally a waste if it's not given the effect that you understand what's lawful and lawful. Accepted dhikr is that, that after that there's a result physically, that your heart is alive and you are not the ghafil anymore, and you're focused on Allah, and you're leaving what's wrong, and then we can consider that Ahmad, this is correct. May Allah Ta'ala give me and you the tawfiq. The situation is very bad and life is short and mouth is close. Shukr to Allah, He's given us such a gathering and allowed us to hear such words. Allah's karam and His mercy, such beautiful words have reached to us. I say that what beautiful words we are discussing and sharing that we should bring into our lives. I'm not a muqarrar, I'm not a speaker, I'm speaking to you. Can there be a greater message than this? For those who have understanding, how Allah Ta'ala has unraveled and given us the message today from His Quran that we are ghafil.